Good morning, lovely peoples. Uh, I hope you're well. A violent hurricane had struck. People were huddled together. A preacher was praying with great oratorical effects in the midst of this violent storm, crying out, Send us the spirit of the children of Israel, the children of Moses, the children of the promised land. At this, an old man with less oratory, eloquence, but speaking more directness, prayed in a very simple and practical way. Lord, don't send nobody. Come yourself. This ain't no time for us to go into a theological discussion with your children, but we need you right now. In our last group of promises this morning that we find throughout the pages of God's wonderful word, we are reminded again and again that God has promised to save those who come to him in humility and faith. Praise God that his promises are serious, simple and sure. So encourage each other again in the Lord. If you are a Christian and are already saved by his wonderful redemption, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice and urge others to trust in him also. If you are still strangers to his wonderful saving power, I urge you to call upon him while he is near and may be found. So then, seven verses from the Bible that encourage us to this wonderful promise. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and verse 13, we read the following. God says, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. In one of the most famous of Bible verses, the Lord Jesus says in John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved John chapter 8 and verse 36 Jesus assures us therefore if the son makes you free you shall be free indeed remember the words of Paul to that Philippian jailer in distress about the prospects that lay ahead. He said the following, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Paul, writing to that church in Rome, says the following, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The writer of the Hebrews, talking about God's power and Jesus' priesthood, an intercession and saving work, says the following, Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since 
he always lives to make intercession for them. Sir John the Apostle, in his first letter, encourages by saying, If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Tennyson could take a sheet of paper, write a poem on it and make it worth hundreds of pounds. That is talent. Rockefeller could sign a piece of paper and make it worth millions. That is capital. Kath Kitson can take material worth a few quid and make it into a bag worth 50, 60, 70 pound. That is skill. An entrepreneur can buy an article for 70p, put it on a website and sell it for a pound. That is business. But God can take a worthless, sinful life, wash it, clean it, put his Holy Spirit within it and make it a blessing to all now and forevermore. That is salvation. And that is the salvation that God has promised and is available for all who choose to accept it. Be well, enjoy your day, and share a short, share, share a short prayer with me as we close. Heavenly Father, we bless you for your goodness towards us. We thank you for the provision of salvation and the promise of it that you've made available through Jesus and his death and his sacrifice. May we rejoice if we are your children and saved by your grace. Help us to believe on you if we haven't done already so. Lord, again, continue to strengthen us during this time of lockdown, of worry, whilst this virus seems to be on the increase. Keep us safe and our loved ones, we pray once more because we ask these things to the one who can provide more abundantly than we can even know or think or even ask. Because we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.